a vision of how um, animals can be together and a hope um, for no more violence in our kingdom or theirs, um, and a way that we can take pleasure um, in what we have without being anxious and worrying about what we don't have, but to root ourselves in, in what just might be enough. So we're talking a little bit about Sabbath because if there's any time in our culture that gives us to focus a little bit more on widening our margins and caring for ourselves, it's the summer. And so this is something that should be so simple and obvious and easy, but at least for me, I will speak only for myself and my truth, it is not. Um, and, and there's a theologian that describes Sabbath, that describes wholeness, shalom, and God's peace as being, taking intentional time to be in friendship with God, with nature, and with others. And those are wonderful, lovely things, right? Friendship and nature and God and others and, right? Except even this weekend when Abraham and I we're supposed to go to Sullivan's Island to be with some friends, um, and flash flood warnings decided we would love to be on the beach, but not at the time of some flash flooding. Um, and so we just wait for another weekend. And so we had this whole weekend open, right? That was it planned in this incredible gift. And I kid you not, like I made it through Friday night, but Saturday came and I was guilty and I was anxious because there were so many things that I should be doing and getting done and I should be using this gift productively and I should be kicking myself in the butt and get myself going. Except no, this was a gift of margin and of time and we got to go to the American Visionary Art Museum and Steve, a half a year ago when there was still snow on the ground, told us about the Silberm Arboretum that we finally got to. And by the way, if you haven't been, it's amazing and gorgeous and totally worth it. Um, but there are moments that we have been given that we can take. And if it's that hard, and I think I'm not the only one, to take it when they're put in your lap, then how much harder is it for us to be intentional about it and to give ourselves space and to give ourselves time to be and not just do? The Kesters know what I'm talking about. They have a family hammock system set up and I got a picture of all the boys in the hammocks hanging out in the woods. That's the time and that's the space that we need to make for ourselves. And if we really have to have a productive reason for doing it, then take this. Because it is our God-appointed um, calling to be stewards of the earth and of creation. And we can't exactly look after creation or animals well if we don't know them or don't take any time to see them or spend um, time with them and see what's going on in their world. And just like we talked about last week with Psalm 8 and all of the amazing creative work that God has done and is doing, there is a call to be present in these texts to see how the grass is clothed and the lilies of the field. And oh my gosh, I'm back at the Silberm Arboretum because there are these lilies that are yellow with these red speckles all over and they shine like a stun sunburst and they're beautiful and amazing and I'm totally coveting, which is against another scripture, but that's beside the point. It was amazing and beautiful. Um, and there are things for us to see and to celebrate and to just revel in that don't have to have a productive purpose but can be there to bring a little taste of awe and wonder into our world and just to delight and see things in the beauty and the wonder that they are and you know if God took all that time in creating and making sure that we had these things I think there should be some delight and pleasure and in, in enjoying them and and being present with them. And of course, that then comes with the shadow side of when we aren't joyous and present um, with. And we just read the book, and we'll be singing the song in the moment of all God's creatures got a place in the choir. Um, and as fun and as lighthearted as that is, um, and as Disney cheesy as this is going to be, there is a circle of life. Um, and it is all intertwined, and what affects one does affect all of us. And if we don't spend time in that circle, in those habitats, then we won't realize. 
Um, a few years ago, um, when a community I was in was really debating climate change and whether it was real or not, and there were uh, very strong opinions on both sides, I was talking about this with a friend of mine who's in the Catholic Relief Services and working with tea farmers in Sri Lanka and had just gotten back from a trip with them and writing a grant as they're applying for emergency monies because of how much climate change has affected what they are and now are not able to do in their farms. And like, this is not a debate. We know, we work this soil, we work this area every single day of our lives and we know how it's changed. And we know what's been affected. Um, and so we come to this place of, we talked last week of um, the pollution runoff um, into our streams um, from all of the pesticides and the chemicals that we use for farming and how jellyfish are thriving in the lowered oxygen levels, whereas fish are just depleting um, and running out. And, and then not only are the jellyfish thriving, but then they're also starting to eat the fish and the fish's eggs because of their loss of predators in our turtles. So we quickly see, right, how interrelated this all is and how it goes. Well. Today is another example of um, just the pesticide um, uh, effect in all of the bee populations um, that have been killed. And to bring it home a little bit um, for Maryland, there are 430 plus species of Maryland bees. Um, and the reason why we care about bees is because, I don't know about you, but I like my fruits and vegetables, and I like my honey, and I also like cotton a lot. Um, and bees make all of this possible. They pollinate 71 out of our world's top 100 food crops. And last year, Maryland beekeepers lost 61% of their hives. And the year prior to that, nearly 50%. There's already a nationwide crisis, um, but for Maryland, it's twice the national average. Um, and in 2016, last year, we became the first state in the United States to pass the most hopeful law to curtail domestic abuse um, of the certain type of pesticide um, to try to protect um, bees. And so this comes from people um, and being um, taking this concern and act, acting on it. Um, and so if you go to the American Visionary Art Museum, do you see where this is tailing back in in my Sabbath moment? That also happened to be an awesome moment for today. Um, there is a whole display on the photographs um, that Sam has taken um, and who paired that with Bonnie um, in order to get this legislation passed and to be there. Um, so honeybees, just for some fun animal moment, fly over 55,000 miles and visit over 2 million flowers to make one pound of honey. And we thought we worked hard. <laughs> it's just amazing. Um, and one worker bee will make only one twelfth of a teaspoon of honey over its lifetime. Talk about needing a village and working it all together. Um, so honey has also, just so we know, has effectively been used to kill many forms of bacteria, even acne and cleansing skins and pores. And then of course we know all of the pollination that helps um, with the crops and to be here. And I just raise this as one other example of how we are all connected um, and what happens when one critter in the choir decides that their voice is a little bit better than the other critters in the choir and starts singing in such a way that we drown out and don't give space or habitat for other voices, um, it will eventually come back to us. And so what is a way in our friendship with God, in our friendship with others, and in our friendship with nature that we give space for all God's critters? that we learn from each melody and each harmony and the truth that each brings, that we are able to share that together and to create music together and a song that's fun and playful, but also deep and meaningful. So this is just a simple <laughs> song of living. This is a simple sermon, but one with very pro profound effects on how we live 
on our physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual health, and how we care for the world and for our communities around us. And it is my hope that we here at Epworth can learn each other's voices and can delight in them and can support each other as we do our singing, as we form our band, and as we empower other voices around us. Amen. So it's one thing to talk about singing, and we're going to start it in just a second because I'm so excited because it's what, it's, anybody else have a childhood song in All God's Critters? And has anybody else been singing this the whole service through already? Thanks, thanks. Um, but as we go, um, there's, may we just be intentional about what fertilizer runoff can do and how it affects. And this is just one example. The most important thing and why we have a discipleship commitment every Sunday is that we practice what we talk about. So if this commitment works for you, that's awesome. If it doesn't, then just choose one that does because there are thousands of different ways that we can live out our call to discipleship and to follow Christ and to build friendship with God and others and with nature. Um, so pick the one that gives you deep gladness, but is still something that is very needed. So for instance, um, only purchase organic sustainable food um, this week to help our fish populations and to help our honeybees. Or, you know, be my husband's parents and research what it takes to start being beekeepers and have some hives and to help repopulate and, and be present. Um, in the world, or just do something fun and take a Sabbath moment for family and go to the American Visionary Art Museum, um, and then also do some learning um, about the Maryland bee um, crisis and see the mandala that is made with the bees, and the, it's all out of paper plates. Like, there's an entire um, exhibit on food right now, and don't even get me started on the whole entire wall of art made out of toast. You all know how much I love bread. And it is beautiful. Um, so have some fun margin this week. Spend some time in nature. Spend some time with each other. And just delight in what there is around us. And in that delighting, make a little bit more room for it to last a little bit longer for a little bit more people. Amen? All right.